everybody, I'm James Gunn. I'm the co-CEO of DC Studios. So as many of you know, DC has been disconnected in film and television for a long time. That's right. And it's one of, you know, our jobs, mine and Peter's, is to come in and make sure the DCU is connected in film, television, gaming, and animation. That the characters are consistent, played by the same actors, and it works within one story. And if something is outside of that, like Matt Reeves' Batman or Todd Phillips' Joker or Teen Titans Go, that it is clearly labeled as DC Elseworlds outside of... So Teen Titans Go is not going anywhere. Yes. Peter and I have gotten pretty lucky in terms of the four projects that are coming out over the next year. First, we have Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Shazam! has always been off kind of in his own part of the DCU. So he connects very well. That moves directly into The Flash, a fantastic movie that I really love. That good to know. That resets the entire DC universe. And then to move into Blue Beetle, a fantastic film about a kid who's a marvelous part of the DCU, and then into Aquaman 2 which leads directly so, into our next few projects, which I'm going to tell you Blue about. Blue Beetle staying, so, Peter apparently. and I, along with a group <laughs> of very talented writers, have started to map out an 8 to 10 year plan of what DC Studios will be in film, mm-hmm. television, and gaming. That's right. This first chapter is called Gods and Monsters. Now this, what I'm about to tell you, is okay. a part of the first chapter. It's not the entire first chapter. Okay. The first project is Creature Commandos. <laughs> Creature Commandos is an animated series. I've written all the episodes. Something we're going to do that's a little bit different at DC is we're going to have characters move into animation, out of animation, usually having the same actor play their voice as who plays them in live. See, that's perfect. I love that. The next project up is Waller. (laughs) This is a story of Amanda Waller played by Viola Davis. Viola Davis is going to team up with members of Team Peacemaker. And this is a story that's been created by Crystal Henry, who did Watchmen, and Jeremy Carver, who created the Doom Patrol. So wait, it is it, a fantastic <laughs> story that's out of this world. And I can't is, this pe- is this Peacemaker okay. Season 2? A soft the spinoff? The true beginning of the DCU. This is called Superman Movie. Legacy. Nice. This is being written by me. I'm in the middle of it. I'm having a great time doing it. <laughs> and Superman will be released into theaters July 11th, 2025. Wow. Okay, the next thing is a big premiere HBO television series called Lanterns. This is a story of a couple of Green Lanterns, Jon Stewart and Hal Jordan. And we have a few other lanterns peppered in there. But this is really a terrestrial-based TV show, which is almost like True Detective with a couple of Green Lanterns who are space space cops watching over precinct Earth Mm. in it they discover a terrifying mystery that ties into our larger story of the DCU. Nice. Next is a big movie called The Authority. The Authority what? is a passion project of mine. It's based on the marvelous Wildstorm characters. We are now bringing into the DCU. I don't know about this one. And we'll interact with all of our primary DCU characters. Like, I don't know about the these Authority characters. The <laughs> Authority are a group of superheroes who think the world is broken and they want to fix it by any means necessary. Hmm. I think it's a very different look at superheroes We're doing a television series called Paradise Lost. Paradise Mm. Lost is a story of Paradise Island, usually known as Themyscira, which is Mm. the birthplace of Wonder Woman. It's almost like Game of Thrones with Westeros, but with all of the inhabitants of Paradise Island. The introduction of the DCU's Batman is the brave and the bold. The Brave and the Bold is the story of Batman and his actual son, Damian Wayne. This is based on Grant Morrison's great comic book run. Damian Wayne is my favorite Robin. He's a little assassin who Batman tries to get in line. And so this is the story of the two of them. We're getting Robin in live action. And the beginning of the family in DCU. Next up is a TV series Booster called Gold. Booster Gold. Booster Gold is one okay. of comics' really popular cult heroes. He is a fascinating guy. He's a loser from the future who uses <laughs> future technology to come back to present day and become a superhero yep. so that people will love him. It is basically the superhero story of imposter syndrome on an HBO Max series. <laughs> One of my favorite comic book series from last year was Tom King's run on Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. Mm. And so we're going to turn that into a big science fiction epic film. Now, Superman is a guy who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents. Where Supergirl in this story, she is a character who was raised on a chunk of Krypton. She watched everybody around Mm. her perish in some terrible way. So she's a much more jaded character. 
And that brings me to Swamp hey. Thing, the last thing we're going to talk about. A very dark I still never watched story the show. The origins of For the, the short time it was available. Is Swamp Thing. And although it's totally it's outside of the rest out there, of the right? DCU, it will still feed into the rest of the stories. Huh. Anyway, those are the stories that I can tell you about right now. Oh, wow, I've that's loved it. the okay. DC characters since <laughs> I was a child. They're incredibly important to me. I knew that this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to do something very different. One of the things that's very important for me in all of these movies and TV series is that the director's vision and the vision of the writers and all of the creators is unique and something special. Storytelling is always king. That's all that matters mm -hmm. to us. And I want to be true to those stories. I want to be true to you guys and really give you something different than you've ever seen before. I will say this. While it's not bombastic or really, I mean, to a degree exciting in the delivery, <laughs> it's somewhat exciting as far as the announcements. There's only a few. It wasn't a whole lot that they talked about, but it was like enough. I feel like they're kind of doing it in a subdued way that's smart because they know, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that still want the Snyderverse stuff. There's going to be people that wanted, you know, just the direction going a different way. They're going to not like James Gunn. And they're going to blame him and Peter Safran for all the, all the things that were canceled or whatnot, different TV shows. Just already some of these announcements I'm liking. In fact, they're doing a Swamp Thing movie. Very cool. I never watched the, the, the DC Universe. Ugh. Uh, season one of that. But I heard it was really good, just DC Universe didn't last at all. Is it still on HBO Max? I might have to check it out. We knew about Superman. I had a feeling there'd be some Green Lantern stuff here, which I'm glad that that's kind of taking, you know, precedence over some other things. Uh, we're getting like background on Wonder Woman, which is it going to be like a prequel to before we see her, like just learning about Paradise Island or will she be in there? Batman the Brave and the Bold, kind of cool. I was kind of hoping they maybe treat Batman like they're treating Wolverine in the MCU as far as like waiting to bring the true MCU Wolverine to screen. I was hoping they maybe wait until after Matt Reeves' Batman stuff is done. I have to let that trilogy finish out. Then we can have Batman come up in the DCU. But because they're splitting it up, they got the Elseworlds stuff and they've got this DCU proper. I'm hoping they do it in a smart way because I don't like when they have multiple actors playing the same character in different ways. Uh, it just doesn't work. But it sounds like they're trying to do it in a way where it makes sense here, especially when it comes to TV shows, uh, animation, uh, games, and movies to have all the same actors playing the same role is going to be cool, but you'll still have your Elseworld stuff. So it's still, I don't know, people are still going to get confused to a degree. Just that your normal viewer, your normal movie watcher or TV viewer, they might still get a little confused. But that's their deal. They have to figure that out. James Gunn, I have a lot of faith in him. I think he's going to do great. I like that. Uh, the Authority was a cool one. I didn't know that that was one. I didn't know anything about that, but... <laughs> For the characters, but seeing what he did with Guardians of the Galaxy, and I feel like that could be something here. I don't know much about those characters, but I'm intrigued, especially for DC. And I want DC to do things in a way where it feels fresh, but it also has some cohesiveness to it, even in the tone to a degree. One thing that I thought that the Snyderverse uh, DC stuff was doing well was they were treating their bad guys a little bit better. Like the villains I felt were a little bit better. Uh, one, that they weren't just dying so quickly, uh, like in the MCU. But I like how they were being treated to a degree in DC. I thought that they had a leg up on Marvel when it came to that. Um, and that's one reason Suicide Squad, well, at least the Suicide Squad worked very well in my mind. And I feel like uh, uh, the Thunderbolts is going to more or less try to be like that but in an MCU way. Still, fun stuff. Again, not like super flashy, which I think was the right way to go, to be honest. That's just me. They could have done a whole Marvel type panel thing, but... No, let's just put out a few things. They don't have much to show anyway. Nothing's been filmed. They're just still writing. Everything's still coming together. So um, it is cool to know that Shazam feeds into The Flash, which that, that's interesting. It kind of makes me want to watch that movie more. <laughs> sort of. Uh, I wasn't really interested in Shazam 2 until I saw the trailer recently. And it was like, oh, okay, that actually looks kind of good. Um, so we'll see. But for DC, I'm excited. DC is my favorite comic book company. I'm, 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 a, I'm a huge Batman fan. It's always been that way. Uh, I just appreciate their characters a little bit more. Marvel, I love. And the MCU has been doing great things to a degree. Phase four, say what you will, kind of sucks. But uh, it was overall movie stuff has been pretty good for them. I'm excited to see what DC does to have everything together as far as movies and TV. Um, similar to what Marvel's been doing. But I don't know. I just feel like DC has kind of a leg up. They've seen kind of the track record. Of what Marvel's done, I think they can do things a little bit better here uh, with DC, and I'm hoping that that's the case. So, just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on these announcements down below. Which one was your favorite? 
of this slate that he's put out of, uh, you know, gods and monsters. Uh, it's not even the whole slate, but we got a few of them. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Check out the end screen for more videos you can watch with me and enjoy with me or laugh with me on this one. Wasn't really a laugh, but uh, you can watch some more with me. Appreciate you guys. As always, I'll see you on the next video. Take care.